good morning namaste thank you so much for joining today as always please practice in accordance to your condition and your comfort level you of course can do the variations along if you know them if you're familiar with the practice but if you have any injuries uh, please respect your limitations and um, remember the practice is an offering and so how you're feeling to an extent affects everybody so be mindful in your practice and be reverent in your practice so that you deliver the best the best experience to all beings everywhere so on that note let's begin close your eyes bring the attention inward before creation what existed god was always there in the midst of it all and will still be there even beyond the ends of this universe merge with that supreme divine consciousness now oh Fix your mind on God alone. Ah. Rest your thoughts in God alone. you will live hereafter of this there is no doubt may all beings everywhere be happy and free from suffering and enjoy this practice through our senses may we always have a strong desire for the knowledge that liberates us from pain and suffering and may we cherish no ill feelings against each other only peace love joy compassion om shanti 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 Let's start off with purifying our pranayama. Imagine how you're being purified from the inside out. You're drawing in the best of the best to purify you, and then you're expelling all the impurities out. So for this technique, we're breathing in through both nostrils, then we're holding the breath, where you apply the throat to the root lock, exhale out to the left side. For um, for the hand positions, so left hand and yana mudra, second finger thumb connected, other three fingers straight on the left knee, right hand, second finger third, uh, fold down towards the wrist, this is Vishnu mudra, turn the palm towards you, it's no longer Vishnu mudra at this point. Um, it's, a prana, it's a mudra that leads for pranayama. The thumb for the right nostril, the right ring finger for the left nostril. Always use those two fingers of the right hand. For the root the breath retention, make sure that on the inhale you're lifting up the chest as high as you can so that when you hold the breath, you can just tip your chin down without hunching the back. You want to keep the back very straight. For the root lock, you're contracting the root muscles, pulling up towards the navel. You're lifting up the pelvic floor and pushing up and in. And for the, uh, the throat lock, just as I said, you bring the, the, um, the chin on the chest. You also bring the tongue through from the mouth behind the teeth to seal off the lock. The attention is at the space between your eyebrows for the breath retention. Okay, so the count is 4, 12, 8, 4 on the inhale, 12 on the breath retention, 8 for the exhale. Try to coordinate so that you're completely empty by the end of the eighth count. Let's do it together now. We'll do it five times. Breathe out completely, empty the lungs. Inhale now. Three. Lift the chest. Four. Hold the breath. Chin on the chest. Throat root lock. Two. Three. Four. All the attention at the space in the eyebrows. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Exhale out through the left side. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Inhale again. Breathe in through both sides of the nose. Three, fill up as much as you can. Four, hold the breath again. Chin on the chest, attention at the space between the eyebrows. 
all the movement of the body, the, the mind fluctuations and emotions are still 10, 11, 12, exhale out to the left side, 3, evenly and steadily, 5, 6, 7, 8, inhale again, 3, 4, hold the breath, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Release the locks. Release the left side. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale. Three, four. Hold the breath for twelve. Everything stops again. All the mind fluctuations, the body movements, and the emotions are like frozen. Left side, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One more time, inhale, three, four, hold the breath, chin on the chest, apply the throat and root lock. Observe the state of the body, the mind, and the emotions. Have no concern as to what you observe. Let's continue to be the witness, watching everything. And then through the practice now, imitating, imitating the forms. We try to see the divine in all the forms. And this helps to cultivate a deep love towards all beings when you try to see yourself in their forms and see the divine grace within all of them. And this helps you to find the ease with them, connect with them, and perhaps realize them more easily and allow the love of God to, and uh, the divine grace to flow through you. Bury your mind deep in the heart Watch the body move with even more ease when you connect with them, when you find, when you tap into the divine consciousness. On that note, let's begin. So let's come to standing. So the first part of the practice, we're doing exercises to help to purify the body, to generate heat, to, heat to help promote the release of the impurities. So for this one, we're just going to imagine you're shaking all the impurities out of the organs. Feel so everything inside is being jostled and just allowing the impurities just drop right out. So you place your hands on the knees, take a deep breath in. Exhale, bend down. Hold the breath out. And then pump the belly in and out. Try to do it at least 50 times to hold the breath out. Now keep holding the breath out, pull everything up and in. Imagine you're trying to hollow, hollow everything up underneath the, the rib basket. Make yourself very thin here, like you're, there's, you're forming a vacuum there. Exhale, release coming back up. Breathe in, breathe out. Again, inhale. Exhale, empty out. Hold the breath out. Again, pump the belly in and out. And I'm just trying to push the belly button right to the, to the lower back. Do it vigorously. Again, keep holding the breath out. Really just try to pull the pelvic floor up and in. And 
release coming back breathe in breathe out and now let's continue with the rest of the practice so stand with your feet about 10 inches apart raise your arms above the head let's charge the body up first the palms slightly turned uh, the, the palms facing inwards here from the soles of the feet draw the earth's energy right up through the body to the fingertips two three four feel yourself being flooded by the earth's energy six seven eight holding it all at the fingertips hold the breath two three four five six exhale all the way back down two three four feel the charge surging right through the body six seven eight inhale again pull your senji right up three four keep your arms up i'm just demonstrating the full um, uh, demonstrating the flow of the energy then holding it at the fingertips hold the breath four five six exhale again two three back down to the soles of the feet five six seven eight last time feel that charging energy rising right up through the body right up to the fingertips three four five six seven eight holding up all the fingertips hold the breath exhale all the way back down two three four feel so you're fully charged six seven eight release your arms down now and make use of that energy throughout the practice so now the exercise is to help radiate, to bring the body and stay radiant health through the purification, through the generation of heat. Hands on the hips. Start to circle the head. Move the head all the way around. Try to see the floor in all directions as the head moves around. If it's too much to do full circles, because when you need neck injuries, just do half circles. From one ear, the chin comes across the chest and goes to the other ear. And then switch the direction rotation. So if you did the half circle, start at one ear, go across the back, and then the ear, the ear comes to the other shoulder. Otherwise, try to move the head all the way around. Good. And then release. Circle your arms up, inhale. Exhale down. Do the exercise with enthusiasm. Do the breathing vigor to get the full range of benefits. Now inhale straight up, exhale, pull down. Stretch the fingers and pull them down into the fists as the arms come down. Now same, um, same time move the hands but arms out in front and then retract. Release, arm swings, throw the arms back behind the ears. And then release, now arms cross the chest, inhale, throw the arms back. Up both head, inhale, roll the body down on the exhale, through the thighs, slappy against the legs. One more. And just allow the body to hang out here for a moment, and allow the body to stop, stop shaking and bouncing, and then roll your way back up. Now, next. Coming into squats, so if you can't down, come down all the way, just come down to the extent that you can. Raise your arms up, pull down into a squat. Be mindful of your knees. And right back up, elbows out to the side and twist from side to side now.
come back to the center. Next one again, um, four parts movement that includes a squat. So again, be, uh, be mindful if you have any knee injuries. Inhale, circle the arms up. Exhale, down. Inhale, up. Exhale, swing down. in front. Inhale, circle around to the front again, pull in and, on, and then punch right back up on the X -ax. Exhale. Now, arms drop by the sides of the body, same movement, but circle in a quarter. Inhale, circle around to the front, pull in on the exhale and drop the arms down. a little bit further apart, toes pointing out beyond the edges of the mat. Go from side to side now, left arm up, inhale, exhale, bend to the right, right arm up, inhale, exhale, bend to the left. without wrinkling the underside if possible at the waist. Imagine you had weights attached to all the fingertips and the heaviness of the arms slide down a leg or going over hanging overhead. Allows you to sink deeper into this side bend. yourself in the sensations. Imagine all beings experiencing this through your body, so practice in a way that feels good to you. Be deliberate, mindful reverent in all your movements, every movement an offering, every movement with an intention of giving the best the best. One more on each side, extend, stretch to limit. And to the other side, reach. Imagine you touch the floor eventually with your fingertips. And then coming back up. And now come on to the hands and knees. Cat cow. So Come on to your fingertips, move the fingers a little bit in closer than just a little bit um, behind the shoulders. Inhale, arch the back. Exhale, thrust the nose towards the belly button. Now, 
flatten your hands on the ground, the hands underneath the shoulders, bring the right leg up, and then swing out to the right. Throw the leg up there, let the leg be loose, like a pendulum swinging. And then the other leg, left leg up, inhale, and then swing out to your left. Just roll the leg up there, throw the head back. And then release. Now come on to your belly. Anchor down through the lower body, the hips, the thighs, and the tops of the feet. If you can, join the hands together. Squeeze the heels or palms together. If it's too much, you can just keep your arms um, extended, not together, parallel to another. Now press down to the bottom part of the body, lift the chest. Exhale, come back down. Inhale up and down. Down, engage the buttocks and upper back. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Up, down, up, down, up, and down. Relax, drop the arms by the sides of the body. Breathe in. Breathe out. Soften everything. The arms come in front of the body now. Now you can either lift the legs up and down, just like so. You can also lift one leg and the opposite arm up. Alternate like this, if you feel stronger. You just rock back and forth, so the legs come up, when the legs come down, the action of the hips and the chest um, pushing into the mat will propel the upper body up, so it looks like this. Continue. And then release. Forehead down on the hand. Breathe in. Breathe out. And now bring the hands down underneath the shoulders. Press up into the table and send the seat all the way back behind the heels, child's pose. This next sequence has four movements. Inhale, come up into a high cat, rounding the back. Exhale, drop the hips in the hands. Push chest forward, shoulders back. Cobra. Inhale back into high cat. Exhale, we'll seat behind the heels. Inhale, rolling up. Exhale, forward. Telescope the neck out of the shoulders. Back up, inhale. Exhale, all the way back. Inhale, rolling up. Exhale, forward. Back up, inhale. Exhale, back. Inhale, up. And then forward, back up, inhale, exhale, back, inhale, roll up, exhale, forward, inhale, back up, exhale, seat back behind the heels, inhale, make like a wave emerging from the ocean, reaching its full height. Then cresting and diminishing, disappearing back in the water. Inhale, constant movement. And then forward. And back up. Watch by moving with power and grace and ease all the way back. 
Inhale up. Exhale forward. Back up. And all the way back. Inhale, really work the spine. And forward, moving in a way that doesn't create any sharp folds in the lower back or the back of the neck at either end of the spine, all the way back. Exhale. Inhale, forward. Think of a hose that if you fold in half, you block the energy flow, the, the water flow. So you want to move in the same way that doesn't create those kinks and those disruptions of the flow. And forward. Back up. And all the way back. Inhale. Exhale. Back up. Inhale. Rounding it back. Exhale back. One more. Rounding. Then flexing. Rounding again. And all the way back. Flattening and lengthening. Rest here for a moment. Breathe in. And breathe out. Remove all fatigue. Okay, so next one, we're going to glide forward on the belly. Make like a snake creeping through the grass. Brush your nose to the ground because you come forward. Lift the head and chest. Bring the head all the way back. Hold the breath. Hold the pose. Make sure you don't jam up the neck. Keep extending the neck out of the shoulders. All the way back. Seat behind the heels. On the exhale. Inhale again. Come forward. Pull the arms. Propel yourself forward. More power and ease. Again, lift the head. Try to imagine you, uh, yourself as in the body of a snake. Tap into his consciousness, his divine qualities. Reflect them in your practice all the way back. Inhale, glide forward again, creeping through the grass. Imagine have that boundless range of motion and be regal and wise, cool and coy and collected. All the way back, exhale. Inhale again, pull forward. Tug at the floor as so they're trying to pull the floor towards you to propel yourself forth more power. Hold the breath, hold the pose. Again, make sure you're not jamming up your neck between your ears and your shoulders. All the way back, telescope the neck and the shoulders. Come forward again. Hold the breath in that breath retention. Allow the mind to go still. Body stops moving, even the emotions are as though they're frozen. All the way back, exhale. Inhale. And in that space, in the breath retention, when the mind is still, try to keep that same temperament no matter what is passing, you're passing through, physically, mentally, or emotionally. And back, exhale. Inhale this time if you can. Come on your fingertips, open up your legs. See if you can bring your feet towards the head, King Cobra. It doesn't matter if your toes don't touch. Just do your best work in your joints. And then flatten your hands. Come all the way back down. Inhale again. Come forward. Make some effort. Just try to bring yourself to the edge of your potential every time. And back exhale. Inhale. Hold the breath. Hold the pose. You don't try new things once in a while. You don't try to fuel your creativity and challenge your abilities. You stay in the same place all the time. You remain stagnant. Hold the breath, hold the pose. When you don't make progress, you lose the enthusiasm. And back. Exhale. So keep the heat building. Keep your inner fire stoked. back, exhale, and again, pull forward, rise up, show up in every way possible, remember this is an offering, because you have to look enthusiastic, that's enthusiastic, and back, just keep thinking, hold the breath, uh, not hold the breath, but relax here, breathe in, breathe out. Keep thinking the supreme witness within is always watching, so you want to make it so it's pleasing to that witness. 
and come forward onto your belly again and flip onto your back. So doing tucks here. Raise your arms above the head, extend the legs, extend the arms. Exhale, pull into a tuck, squeeze the knees to the shoulders, the chin to the knees. Inhale, extend. Navel hollows out and lengthens. Exhale, pull in. Inhale, always according to your abilities, reach out. <coughs> Exhale, pull in. Make your body very compact, like a, make it look like a fist. Reach out and pull in. Inhale. Exhale. Each movement gets equal attention, equal effort. And pull in. Inhale. Keep steady effort all the way through. Exhale. Inhale. Stretch. Exhale. Pull in. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, extend. Hold the breath and tuck now. Bring the shoulders up to the knees if you can, in front of the shoulders. The chin between the knees if you can. Get your forehead to your thumbs above the knees. Concentrate on the center of the forebrow. And then release, exhale. Inhale again, elongate from the fingers all the way to the toes. Then hold the breath and tuck. Press the lower back down. Squeeze the thighs into the abdomen. Release all the muscles coming together so they all want to meet. Reach out. Hold the breath. Break the pose, exhale. Inhale, extend. Hold the breath. Once again, everything stops. Concentrate all your attention on the center of the forebrow. See to divine perception. And back, exhale. Keep trying to trigger the divine bliss when the energy arises and gets to the crowd. Hold the breath. Tuck in. Concentrate very hard on the center of the forebrow. Release, try to attract all the prana there. Inhale, reach out through your tension. Hold the breath and tuck. And back, exhale, trying to improve your medita meditation and concentration skills as well. Hold the breath and tuck. The mind starts to wander over. Be unconcerned, be unjudging, keep trying. Release, exhale, one more time. Inhale, extend. Then fold the breath, tuck in very tightly. And release. Now take a deep breath in here. Exhale, imagine you're fainting. Let go of all fatigue. Now arms above the head, and then roll all the way back into plow pose if you can, or as far as you can. And then come back down. If you can, the feet come down, and when the feet touch down, lift up to seat it and pull the body over your legs. If you can't do the movement, so, uh, can't, can't sit up easily, just start to sit up, bring your back up off the ground as your legs come down. The movement of the legs moving, um, swinging down, to propel yourself up into seated position. You try to make the movement smooth, smooth, no jerky movement, no abrupt change of the speed, no crash landings at the body or the body on the ground. Nice and smooth. Keep watching the body moving. You can hold on to your knees as well while you're rocking back and forth. And one more. Try to keep your legs straight, your arms straight throughout the whole sequence. Next time you roll back, make ready to stand. So as your legs come over your head, as they come down, bend your knees, plant your feet, and come right up to standing. 
Let's so nice move to the front of the mat. Four, three, and on the sky. Renounce all the fruits. Imagine this as your divine obligation to all beings everywhere. Smooth good as one. Surya Namaskara. Raise your arms up over the head. Arch back as you see fit. Pull the body down onto your legs. Chest on the sides, head down. Right foot back, lower down the knees. Sit down to the seat. Come into high plank. Knees down, chest and forehead down. Glide between your arms, come up into the cobra. Roll over your toes, out of the Vanasana, with the seat up and back. Then the right foot steps forward to the hands, drop the left knee down. If it feels difficult, um, if your foot doesn't come all the way, you can always just use the right hand to assist the foot forward, push the seat in. And then left foot comes in to meet the right, bow to legs, chest on the thighs, head down. Come right up to standing, arch back again as you see fit. Hands come back to the heart. Engage the buttocks and the upper back as you arch back. It helps you support in the movement. Pull the body down, fold the body in half. Left foot back, lower down the knees, sit down to the seat. Into the plank. Ashtanga Namaskar, knees, chest, forehead down. Glide between your arms, scoop right up into the cobra. Keep all, every, create as much space as possible in the seat up and back. Try not to jam up the neck between your shoulders. Bring the left foot forward, drop your shoulders down, tussle the neck out of the shoulders. Then the feet come together, Uttanasana. Come right up to standing, reach up and back. Hands back to the heart, stretch the whole front of the body. Don't worry about the breath. Just move the body in a way that feels natural, that lifts, but the breath remains steady and uniform. Right foot back this time, do not drop the back knee to the ground if possible. Into the high plank. This time, we're going to see taller the back and knees stay up. So you can swing right through into upward facing dog without touching your hips and your knees to the ground. If it's too much, just do what we did before. Slide on your belly. Back into downward facing dog. Melt the heart. Allow the head to fall below the arms. Right foot steps forward. Press back through the left heel. Don't drop the knee to the ground. Again, keep it up. Feet come together. Uttanasana. Chest on the thighs. Head down. Come up. Reach up and back. Remember, always move according to your abilities, hands back to the heart. Raise your arms up, keep thinking, bury your mind deep in the heart. Watch the body move with more grace and steadiness and ease. Uttanasana, gesture of humbleness. Left foot back, keep the back knee lifted, into the plank, bring the seat all the way back, and then see if you can swing forward again. You have to push with your toes, push with your hands. And keep the elbows close to the body it's coming to you as you're making your way to upward facing dog. Back into downward facing dog. Move the heart, allow the head to drop below the arms. Left foot forward now. Place the foot quietly. Try not to have big, heavy footfalls. Feet together. Pull the body to your legs. Make the practice of beautiful, the most beautiful expression of devotion that you can. Mention this as a divine dance. Hands back to the heart. Raise your arms up over the head. Reach up. Bring down now, forward, a gesture of humbleness. Lift the head, press into your hands, hop or walk back into Chaturanga. If you're hopping, hold the breath and bend your elbows to come back so you don't land with a big jarring movement. No jerky movements. And then lift up through the heart. Now bend the toes under, push your hips a little bit further forward between your hands, and then pulse. Feel as though, or look as though you want to try to fold the body in half. Keep your head high, keep pushing your chest up away from the seat so you don't jam up the lower back. I'm going to make with the dog howling at the moon here. Now tuck your chin in, press into your hands, push into your reach your toes, back into downward facing dog now, not the heart. Try to get your chest closer to the ground. Try not to bend the arms. Be very flexible, maybe the top head will come down, maybe even the forehead, the nose, even the chin. Soften through the shoulders, make with the dog stretching its back, and most importantly, exhibit the loyalty of the dog to its master. 
embrace all the divine qualities of that which, which you're representing. And now lift the heels, bend the knees, lift your hands, hold the breath if you like, and then jump forward or walk forward. Pull the body against the legs, head down. Come right up to standing, reach up and back. Arms over the head, hands back to the heart. Again, swing your arms up, stretch the whole front of the body. And then come forward, Uttanasana. Lift the head and chest, press into your hands, hop and walk back softly into Chaturanga and then upward facing dog. This time round your back, make your way right into downward facing dog and then again transition to upward. Round your back as you're coming forward, roll over your toes and push your chest forward right between, uh, right through the center of the chest. Back the other way. Imagine trying to push the heart right up between your shoulder blades. Then mount, the heart comes towards the ground. Come again, forward over your toes, round your back. Uncoiling gracefully into upward facing dog. Back the other way, round your back. Again, modify as you need to. You can lower your hips to the ground if, you, if, you, if that's what you can do. And then back into downward facing dog, mount the heart. Lift the heels, bend the knees, hop forward. You can hold your breath as you do it, so you land lightly, pull the body down onto your legs. Come all the way up to standing, reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. Two more, faster. Raise your arms up over the head. Pull the body down. Lift head and chest. Come back into Chaturanga, through into Upward Facing Dog. And back into Down Facing Dog. Remember trying to build heat. And then jump forward, hop in a walking, pull the body down to your legs, come right up to standing, hands back to the heart, modify, of course, as you need to. Raise your arms up. Don't worry about the breath, uh, the results. It's the effort that's more important. Lift the head and chest, back into chaturanga, hop in a walking, through into upward facing dog, back into downward facing dog. Again, you can hop or walk forward, bend your knees if you're hopping. Do it lightly. Pull the feet towards your hands. Pull the body down. Onto your legs. Come right up. And we turn home. Take pause in Pranamasana. The hands in that universal gesture of offering. From the heart, inhale all your love up to the crown. Keep your attention there. Hold the breath. Imagine now that you're sending your love out to all beings everywhere. Exhale back down to the heart. Remain established in divine love towards all beings. Then release the hands. Let's do some standing poses now. Starting off with Natarajasana. Standing on your left foot. Take your right foot up. Try to have the knee and the toes on the same line. Bend your knee. And if you can, hold your breath. Let go of the foot. Try to let it float there. If it's too much, you can just rest it on your left thigh. Arms out to the side, left wrist right on top of the other. Make sure your elbow doesn't drop down, either elbow. Keep a straight line from right through the wrist, from elbow to elbow. Think of that dancing Shiva form and make yourself look like that. Good, now from here, straighten out the leg if you can. Take hold the inside of the heel and then bring it out to the side, another version of dance or ballet pose. So when you're doing this, if you can't um, hold up, uh, if you can't straighten your leg, you're starting to punch. You can hold under the knee if you need to start or you can stand against the wall. You want to engage the muscles on the inside of the leg. If you're more flexible, bring your leg up higher, close to the shoulder, lean to your left, try to have your fingers and toes on the same line. fall out of it, just come right back up again. Just keep trying. And then break the pose, bring the foot down. Try it on the other side now. Stepping firmly on your right foot, bring your left leg up. The shin levels the ground if you can, bend your knee, keep your back straight. And then let go of the foot again. If you need to rest it on your right thigh, then that's okay. The right wrist over the left. With practice, the body builds strength. The fingers straight up and down. And the 
press into your right foot again, hold the breath. Sometimes it helps you to stay in control. Take hold of the heel, flex the foot. This helps with balance too. If you're engaging the roots of the base of the roots of the toes, this helps come up higher. Good. And then release, bring the foot down. So let's try another one. Bend your knees, land your belly on your thighs, fingertips pointing down, index fingers. If you need to, you can bring your fingertips to the ground to start. Raise your right knee up all the way. The, feet, the foot close to your seat, the toes pointed. And then slowly you take your fingers up off the ground if they're on the ground. Maybe straight up. Hummingbird. The body is very small and compact here. Now you can stay here if this is where you feel comfortable, if this is where your edge is, or extend the leg, the right leg, and bring your arms out to the side. Make like a gliding eagle soaring through the air at great speed. Be magnificent like that eagle. Good. Now from here, bring the left fingertips down if you can. About a foot in front of the right foot, turn to the right. Open up your chest to the side. Bring the right arm up. If this is too much, you can always come down onto your knee. So just try to find variations. Use your creativity to find versions that work for you. Try to pull the right shoulder back. And then break the pose. Come back down. Try it again on the other foot. Okay, so start with your belly on your thighs. Index fingers can come down to the ground to start. Slide your left toes back and pick up the left leg. The knee is close, is up as high as you can, the foot's close to the seat. And then slowly keep gazing at the ground. Just bring the left the fingers up off the ground. And maybe you can take your arms over the head. Straight up, line the shoulders. And if you want to expand, extend the left leg, bring your arms out to the side. The head's about the height of the knee. Try to get your left foot as high as you can, higher than the head. Again, make like you're swooping down from a great height, then skimming along the surface of the ocean. Now from here, bring the right foot just to the ground. Make sure you give enough space, not too close to the foot, at least the foot, maybe more like 12 to 16 inches. Then open up to your left and raise the left arm up. Again, you can come onto your knee if you like. Try to pull the left leg up higher. And then break the pose. Bring the right, bend the right knee and bring the left foot down. Good, now come to the back under the mat, take your left foot forward, and then from here, sink down to the seat, Virabhadrasana 1. If your hip is kind of stuck to her to the right, you can lift the back heel if you need to. Expression of divine devotion here. Look up, his own offering, as I always say, I'm yours to do service. Then lower the knee down, flatten up the toes, and see if you can take your arms back behind the ears now. Wiggle the shoulders back and forth. Try to pull the arms right alongside the ears, maybe even further back. Drop your shoulders down. If it's too much, you can either take all the opposite elbows, rest your head in your arms like your butt, to lie on the beach, get that sense that you're just leaning back, or hands on the front knee. Push yourself away from the front leg. Make sure you don't jam up the lower back. You can send the body up out of the hips. So whatever expression is good for you. Radiate your inner light. Again, the chest is fully open. So you open yourself up to divine grace. And then coming back up. From here, bring your hands to the inside of the left foot. Move your left foot out to your... Uh, the edge of the mat, 
And if you can, drop to the right, see if you can get your right hip and the right form to come down. Roll to your left, see if your left form can come down. Be very tight in the hips, maybe your hips are too high to bring your head, your forearms down. It's okay, just keep on trying to sink your seat like you're doing a cobra. Keep your shoulder close to your knee. Eventually, keep telescoping your head and chest forward and maybe your body will come down. If you're on forms, think of the sphinx pose. You're anchoring down through the hips and maybe you get that feeling that you're anchored down. You attach to the earth by the hips and the leg, the lower body. Maybe the rest of the body will follow the belly and the chest will come down. Keep your knee close to the shoulder. Fix your gaze on a point like a lizard that doesn't blink. Imagine you're sunning yourself on a warm earth. Good. And now from here, coming back onto your hands. Slide your left foot in a little bit. Bend the toes under on the back foot. Come upright. Raise your right arm up, left hand to the seat. Bring the right hand to the outside of the knee. Left hand on the seat, push in and pull down. Lift through the heart, turn to your left. Look over your left shoulder. If you want, you can lean back and see if you can take your hand to the foot, the heel, or on your thigh if it doesn't quite reach. Keep turning towards the left as you push the heel or, or even just the knee to your right. Keep your back straight, keep your lower back lifted. Don't hunch down. Now, if this is right at your edge, you stay there. If you want, Padivita Pasha Kanasana. Raise right arm up, ankle and toe knee towards the right, same orientation, and sweep across the leg. Try to bring the armpits to rest on the outside of the knee. You can use your, you can use your left hand to form a fist to push into your right hand and then push up so that the belly is coming above the thigh and bring the center of the hand, so the, the hand, center of the chest towards the thumbs and keep rolling that left shoulder back until your chest is looking up. Pull the left hip back, the head forward. If you can take a bind, you can, if you wanna take a bind, try to try your, bring your seat back, create more distance between the front shin and the back, the seat and give more self room for your arm to scooch under. Use the left hand to guide it underneath the leg. Pull your left arm over the back and pull the hand out further. And then you can take hold of the left wrist and the right hand or just lock your fingers together. Last action, hold your breath, push in through your toes and maybe get your knee up off the ground. Left shoulder moves all the way back. Keep the back leg strong. If your leg is lifted, don't sag and let your hips um, sag either. You'll feel heavy in the pose and you won't be able to hold it as long. Now from here, release. Bring your hands down to the ground. Step back into plank, Vasi Stasana. Left hand moves more towards uh, the right in front of the nose, straight line from hand to hand, push your hips up, and see if you can get your chest forward a little bit. Make like a, a kite being blown from behind. Make sure you don't drop into your left shoulder. Keep your left arm fully extended. Come back to the plank, go to the other side. Move the right hand more to the, in front of the nose, to the left, and come up again. Now notice my hands a little bit in front of the shoulder. This helps to keep the arm nice and strong. Push down into the hand, extend the neck out of the shoulders. Again, don't fall into your shoulder, don't collapse there. Stay strong. And then come back to plank. And from here, bring the seats back. Give yourself a little bit more room to bring the right foot forward. Back foot flat or heel lifted if you need to, to come into Virabhadrasana one again. Raise your arms up and head back. Gesture, offer yourself up for service. Lower the knee down, flatten up the toes. Kapiyasana again, rock the shoulders back and forth. 
Try to keep your arms straight so you don't see a crescent moon with any kinks in the line. Keep your arms straight, stay too, true to the form. Imagine it in your mind and try to realize it with your body. Imagine your index fingers going over the back toe in that nice, smooth, and continuous curve. Lift up the chest, push the heart up, away from the seat. Good, now coming back upright. Place your hands on the inside of the foot. Have the right foot, move your right foot out, and then fall to your left again. If you need to, if your hip is way far away from the ground, stay on your hands, but just sink your seat. Imagine you had rocks in your hip pockets and they're weighing you down. Maybe the hips will sink further. If you can get onto your forearms and go ahead, and then keep creeping forward. The more you lengthen, the more the body comes close to the ground. My teacher says that the poses are all about physics. Try to find the forces and the extensions you need to, to realize the shape. With practice, this becomes more intuitive over time. You learn all sorts of tricks to get into the poses more efficiently and with more ease. Ease finds you find your ability to just you can meditate. Spend more time meditating in the pose. Bend the toes under on the back foot, left hand up, right hand to the seat, and take your left hand to the outside of the knee. Push against the knee, turn towards the right. Use the right hand to guide more length into the lower back. Imagine trying to just pull the um, just smooth out the line in the back and get the tail to curl down and under. If you want, again, you can move your hand back to the heel, on the outside of the heel, or onto your thigh. Keep your shoulders up over your hips. If you're at your edge, you stay there. Otherwise, come forward, Parivita Pashvakanasana. Doing this orientation, left arm up, angle the toe and knee towards the left. The arm is sitting again on the outside of the knee, the hands together, either fist or Anjali Mudra. And then push the right hand down to your left, the belly comes higher than the thigh, and keep pressing against the elbow against the knee, and turn your chest up. Try to keep your side of the chest moving towards your thumbs. The face and chest turned up. Again, if you want to take a bind, lean your hips back, use the right hand on the elbow to guide the hand through. Underneath, so the hands underneath the belly now. Take your other hand around, pull the hand out if you need to a little bit more. Or join your hands together. Take your uh, left hand to the right wrist or lock your fingers together. If you can, get your back knee up off the ground. Push through that heel, do it slow. If you do it fast, too fast, you may lose your balance. Whatever happens, though, you may be unconcerned. Just do your best. Keep trying if you don't succeed. Then release. Bring your hands back down. Step back into plank. This time, bring your seats back a little bit further, like you're doing down in facing dog. Into Vasti Stasana again, but this time maybe you can try other variations. Move your left hand more to the center of the mat, towards the right. Turn. You can stay in your Vasi Stasana. If you need to modify, you lower the knee down. If you want to go further, you can slide your right toes back, skim them back, so the toes are just alongside the left knee. And then pull the left foot in a little bit. Turn the foot at 45 degrees. Make sure the base of the big toes down. And then open up your chest. Wild thing. If you want, you can... Spin on heel the palm, drag the left foot in, come right into Urdhva Dhanurasana for those who can't or are apt to do so. Go ahead, push your chest forward, lift your heels, give yourself a little bit of a stretch before you return. So spin on heel the palm, keep your left arm straight, keep your hips high, come back to downward facing dog, and just go right to the other to the other side, right hand. Displaces towards the left, spin on your feet, come into wild thing, 
making modifications as you need to, or slide your left toes back. Push, pull the right foot in a little bit. Make sure that the foot's about 45 degrees and the base of the big toe is grounded. Keep spinning on the right heel of the palm, then drag the right foot back in line with your left. The left hand places beside the right. Word Vedanirasana for those who can. Again, lift the heels, push your chest forward in front of your arms before coming back. Spin on the right heel of the palm, keep your hips high as you make your way back. Always be mindful of your joints, of your limitations, downward facing dog. Right, now from here, come forward and plank, lower the right knee down and swing the, the right leg out towards the left. Bring the other knee right in behind your other knee and then your toes swing out to your right. Sit between your feet if you can. If, it's, if your seat can't come all down all the way, can you sit on a block or lean to your left and just bring your left leg out in front. Keep your knees aligned on top of one another. Keep the mark on as you need to. And then bring the right arm up. Take hold the elbow, push the elbow up higher, and push it back behind your head. Send your hand down the center of the back. Push your heart up from behind. And if you have the mobility to do so, the left arm can swing down and right up the back. Join the hands together. Pull the hands down the back. See if you can get your elbows to be coincident with the spine, the head in between. Inhale, keep pushing heart up. Keep lifting the body up out of the hips, spine like this. Exhale, drop the shoulders. Reground through the seat. Again, find quietness. There's a time to be still in all the postures. That's when the mind can go into its deep state of meditation. And tuck your chin in, bring your right elbow down, and then release. Walk back, put your hands in front, come into plank again, lower the left knee down this time first, swing the leg out, the shin out to the right, and bring the left knee, right, uh, the right knee in behind your left. And then sit back between your heels. Again, make the modification, modification if you need to by bringing your right leg out in front, Left arm up this time, push the elbow up high, and then push it further back behind the head. The fingers come further down the back. And if you can, you can take your arms up, your right arm up the back, join your hands together, and pull the right hand, uh, the, the right hand, so that the hands come further down the back. Lift the chest, anchor the left arm in place at the back of the head. Move the elbows one on top of the other if you can. And then release. Good. Now from here, uncross the legs. And if you can, next pose is an inversion. Take hold the opposite elbows. Make sure you can hold them easily. Then don't move your elbows. Just move your hands forward into lesson and place your head between your palms. Lift your seat, walk your feet towards your elbows as close as possible, and then maybe pulse up and down up off your feet, your heels. Come right on your tippy toes, those who are flexible, way to get your thighs right against your body. And then you hug your head with the heels, your palms, your head from the helmet to the back of the head. Then you can take one knee up, bring the heel close to your seat, Push into your forearms, hold the breath, so you can get your other one there. Bring your seat back a little bit. Eventually, you can bring one leg back. When your hips, feel your hips are over your shoulders, bring one leg back, allow the foot to hang heavily towards the ground, flex your foot, and then the other foot forward. So sometimes it's easier to start if you can, with your in a tuck, and wait until your hips are in line with your shoulders, otherwise your back tends to round and you can't get up off the ground easily because you can't get the leg up due to hip flexibility or, or otherwise. Okay, so maybe if you can bring your knee and press your shin right against your chest, 
push into your forearms and then bring your other foot up. You can eventually pull your hips up a bit more to straighten out your back and then you might be able to split your legs at this point more easily. One leg back, one leg forward. This helps to keep the balance. This is a good way to find a balance. Bend the toes on uh, back. Flex your feet. Good. And then start to make your way down softly into child pose. Breathe in, breathe out. Now slide your arms forward, glide right through into the cobra. Back into Adho Mukha Sofanasana. Now this time we're going to jump forward, land your feet roughly where your heels, your palms are, into a little bit of a squatting pose. And then drop your seat down, bring your elbows to your knees, push your palms together, wrists in line through your elbows. Then place your hands down, squeeze your shoulders, uh, your knees against your shoulders, tip forward by just lifting your heels up. Your shoulders come over your fingertips, keep your arms strong and straight. Then from here, if you can, lift your feet up off the ground. Just bend your toes back, hold your breath, you may be able to find your pose here. Those who want can tuck your chin in, bring your forehead down, or and then roll onto your top of the head. Come right up into your headstand. Again, for practitioners who are comfortable with this. Just for a moment. Then bring your knees back down onto your arms. Squeeze your arms, your inner your knees against your upper outer arms, against the shoulders, flick your bend your toes back. Hold your breath, press into your hands, and see if you lift your head again, and back down. The heels, tuck your chin in, and everyone can do this. Tuck your chin in and roll all the way onto your back. Once your back's on the ground, press into your arms and send your feet back behind your head. Once you can move your hands together behind your back, wiggle a little bit. Try to get your arms completely behind your back if you can, your elbows come close to one another, your wrists together. And then when you bring your hands on the back, your hands land on your mid-back, and then raise one leg up as high as you can. Push into the mid-back, try to get your, as though you're trying to touch the ceiling with your toes. And then maybe bring your other foot up. Good, if it's too much, if your arms are behind your back, need to modify, you can keep your legs at a, an angle, or if it's too much still, just sit on your hands with your legs up. Okay, scoot a little bit forward, so I'm running out of room. Let's switch to our position you are. You can either stay in plow pose if you like, hands on the back, your feet behind your head. If you want, you can bring your feet up a little bit, stay in a tuck. Whatever is suitable for you. Go to a place where you find ease, where you can bring your mind into silence. The more challenging aspect of the practice is trying to still the mind. When the mind is restless, that's when the cravings start, which lead to desires, which lead to attachments, which ultimately leads to suffering. You have to keep on training your mind to be calm and undisturbed, unaffected, unjudging. Now those you in, in Shavagasana, shoulder stand, with your legs straight up, can bring your legs back down and plow pose behind your head. Good, now from here, Get ready to come out. Keep your legs close to your body, your palms on the ground behind your seat, and then slowly roll out. No big, fast, heavy landings. Once your, your seat lands on your wrist, keep lowering your legs. Stop about halfway down. 
and lift your upper back up off the mat. Bring your elbows closer together. Push your chest up. Bring your head back. See if you can forget the top of the head to the ground. This is too much. Bring your legs down all the way to the ground. And now by a streak of breath, breathe very fast in the nose. to seat position. Sit up any which way you like. Roll onto the side that's easier for you. Good. Now from here, send your feet apart, the toes beyond the edge of the mat. So now I'm going to bring your arms from the outside. It's like stork pose, but in other variation. And bring your arms in between. And then you have to glide the heels forward until your shoulder is pretty much beside your knees on the outside. Tuck your chin in and see if you can bring your hands onto your back of the head, close to the neck. You can interlace your fingers if you can. And just concentrate on the base of the spine. Feel the shoulder blades falling away from one another. Inhale, lift the head and chest. Slide your feet in. And then from here, press into your fingertips, come into a squat. Now we're going to do almost the same, po the same pose, except in another orientation, standing. So now bring your feet to the toes a little bit closer so the edge of the feet are parallel. The, edge, the feet are about three inches, two and a half to three inches away from the edge of the mat. Bend your knees, bring arms from the outside and through the center. Push out against the insides of the shins with the backs of the hands. Lift your seat. Let's see if you can tuck your chin and bring your hands a couple around the ears. Eventually you might be able to move your hands back and interlacing the side uh, behind your head. Pull the head through a little bit further between your legs and down. If it's too much, you can just take the opposite wrists, push them into the backs of the knees. Eventually, see if you can lift the seat to straighten your legs and bring your head in between your legs. So different options here, depending again on your abilities, on your flexibility. Just do your best. Then release. Come up. And from here, roll your way up. Now, separate your feet. Toes pointing out, hands on the seat. Now from here, push into seat, pull down, bend your knees a little bit so your, your knees come over your toes. And then keep using your hands to guide the tail further down and under. So you're trying to pull the seat towards the backs of the knees. If when you feel comfortable, you allow your head to fall back slowly. Slide one hand down if you like. To the back, of the, down the back of the leg, just below the knee, and then the other hand. Press the heels, palm firmly in, just into the legs, and then roll. Push the thumbs further through between the middle, and see if you can roll the thighs outwards and roll the shins at the same time with the with your hands. Push your hips forward and up, so straighten your legs a little bit more. All according to your condition, if you're more flexible, and you feel comfortable to do so, you can move your hands all the way down. Maybe you can even eventually step on your fingers with your heels. Then move your hands back up the legs one at a time, press into the seat, push in, in and pull down at the same time, and come back up. Good. Now from here, come down onto your knees. and then bring your seat down. Bring your legs forward. Keep your knees together. Okay, so your feet are a little bit in front, right hand behind the back, left arm up, and take the right hand, to, uh, left hand to the outside of the thighs. Right hand center is just behind your seat. Make sure you're not leaning back. Make sure your hand's right against the seat. 
the center of it. And then inhale, push the lower back up and in. Exhale, turn to the right. Keep pushing your elbow into the knees and knees and the elbows. Make sure your left leg doesn't fall away from your right. Keep the back straight. Shoulders down. Toss up the neck out of the shoulders. The whole body turns, not just the eyes. You have to imagine the spine spiraling upwards and maybe the body will spin more just with that, keeping that visualization in your mind. And go to the other side. Left hand down the center of the back, right arm up. And push your elbow against the knee, move the belly away from the thighs. Inhale, push the lower back up and in. Lift the chest. Exhale. Turn more to your left. Chin eventually comes over your left shoulder. Come back to phase four. Lie on your back. Just allow the feet to extend. Make your way down softly. No big heavy thuds on the ground. And once you're down, take a deep breath in. Exhale, let go of all fatigue, let go of all struggles, all tension. So allow the body to rest. Feel as though the muscles and the bones and the organs were hanging off the bones. Heavily. So heavy that they eventually just fall right off. The bones can't even sustain them anymore. They just fall right off. Feel with the release or the dropping off of those muscles, the organs and skin from the bones. The self becoming much, much lighter now. Even the bones themselves feel hollow and weightless. Just scan your mental processes, your emotions for any negativity. If you happen to find any, any experiences, any thoughts that disturb you in any way, that take away from your contentment, that bring you into a place of anger or fear or doubt or whatever it is, sadness. Let go of it all. Imagine there's a big magnet in the center of the body attracting it all like a big funnel, just pull all that negativity out of the body. Leaving yourself completely empty and light, like an empty vessel. And receive now the best of the best of the universe. Attract it with your attention. Imagine all of it coming in, flooding you, like waves coming onto the beach. Direct it all to the spiritual heart located in the center of the chest and the right side of the physical heart. This is the residing place of God. And as God is equally present in all forms, when you direct everything to God, it goes out to all beings automatically. Everything that you have is meant to be shared. So keep sharing. Always stay in that mindset of benevolence and generosity and compassion. Give to others what they need as well. Nothing is meant to be kept to the self, especially spiritual knowledge which helps us to evolve and break the patterns that cause the pain and suffering. yourself the following sentence three times to ingrain it in your body 
your mind and your heart. I see the divinity in all beings. Imagine in all your interactions with any being, even with the animals. Imagine that you're seeing God right through them. You can see their divine presence. And when you sense that divinity, it becomes unthinkable to want to do harm to them. Love all beings. Eventually you have to pass through their form as well and experience what they experience. This is the goal. This is the purpose of reincarnation, of the practice. To cultivate compassion, to see sameness everywhere, to see the divine in everything. Ultimately that's the only thing that's real, God. So now prepare to come back from Shavasana. Start to make your way back up to seated position in a way that is gentle, mindful, and quiet. Now we'll close the practice with Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Instill the peace within and send it out to all beings everywhere.